Welcome to 2011 Studies. We're looking at the 1290 days and the 1335 days of Daniel 12. I'm going to take a little break from that. We're going to be looking at something that I've seen a lot on YouTube. And I can sort of understand why because of the, the conflict with Israel and Iran and everything that's going on right now. Um, people are talking about nuclear war. People are talking about World War III. And I think it's important to highlight some verses that show up to the coming of Christ, it's going to be business as usual. It's going to be um, pretty much everyday life. So I don't think that has to be a concern. However, the, the day of the Lord is another thing, and it's longer than the day. So we're going to look at both topics. Uh, will there be nuclear war, World War III? What does the Bible say? So people online are talking in droves about a nuclear war coming. I want to share some verses which really may relate. This is not something we really need to be overly concerned about. I do not completely eliminate a small-scale nuclear exchange, but a World War III type scenario is not possible. And for the reason of these verses um, that I'll highlight. First, Jesus mentioned there will be wars and rumors of wars. Matthew 24, 6. Matthew 24, 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Second, we know the gospel of the kingdom must go into all the world. Now this is a, a full-scale explosion of the gospel of Christ, the gospel of, of the kingdom. And this is Matthew 24, 12 through 14. Matthew 24, 12, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Thirdly, the language Jesus uses in relationship to his coming is in comparison to the days before the flood and the days of Lot. Um, the, here's the language of the flood, Matthew 24, 37. Matthew 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. 38. For as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. 39 and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And the comparison to the days of Lot, this is Luke 17, 28, 29, and 30. Luke 17, 28, Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. 29, But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and destroyed them all. 30. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So there will be eating, drinking, marrying, buying, selling, planting, and building. This does not sound like a World War III. It, it seems like the real threat is the coming of Christ it, Himself. And that's, that's when the timekeepers are taken away. And by the way, I, you know, I did that Eclipse video last time, and... Um, I, I went through some of the pictures again, and at the end of this video, I will have uh, one picture I'm going to highlight that I took, and I didn't, the only editing I did was the contrast and the darkness and lightness, stuff like that. I didn't draw anything into this, and I wanted to get your opinions on, uh, if you comment down below, if you see something um, that was taken during the eclipse or not. But um, and I'm not going to say what it is. So you're going to have to just comment and or if you see nothing, just say I see nothing. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, Jesus did mention something else very important. Um, this is Matthew thirteen nineteen. Mark thirteen nineteen. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time neither shall be. 20. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, 
but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. One could argue that if Jesus would not return, then yes, mankind could, could destroy himself. However, there is a shortening of the days. No flesh should be saved can also be referring to salvation itself because the, the term for the elect's sake, it is mentioned. I believe it's during the 1335 days where God will reverse the 1290 days of desolation and there will be a time of great salvation. Now for those who don't know who are viewing this for the first time, um, there's in Daniel 12 there's 1290 days mentioned first and then the 1335 days. Bless is he who waits and comes to the days of 1335. Well in this channel we've been studying uh, the 1335 days in sections of years, wherever it, it, it pops up. Sometimes it's 1334 days, sometimes it's 1365 days, and other times it's precisely 1335 days from trumpets to Pentecost. So we have two of them right now, um, two options, 2022 to 2026 trumpets to Pentecost, and then 2027 to 2031 trumpets to Pentecost. Now, as I look around, I'm not seeing blessed is he who waits and comes to the days of 1335 yet. Um, it's not saying it can happen within, you know, the latter section of the, the 1335 days uh, up to 2026, but I think it's more likely that it's 2027 to 2031 for numerous reasons. Um, but getting back to this, we're looking at the... Um, the verses in Zechariah, now this is going to be a part two on this study, it's, I'm not going to do it all tonight, uh, and it's because of Zechariah 14's language. Um, so let's, uh, let some people have tried to claim that actually Zechariah 14 is speaking of nuclear war, and it's just the way the King James um, people had, they worded it, I mean they took the, you know, the, the Hebrew word and they, they translated it into English transliterated and then um, it goes up to uh, no just no just Zechariah 14 12 now we have to remember though that the context of Zechariah 14 is the day of the Lord so that's an important thing to highlight so let's first look at uh, Zechariah 14 12 Zechariah 14 12 and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And now the context of Zechariah 14 is found in Zechariah 14.1. Zechariah 14.1, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Now, Zechariah 14, uh, 3, 9, 19, and 5, um, are all part of this, and it's a very fascinating chapter. If you have not read Zechariah 14, uh, please read it, but we will be sort of dissecting the words next uh, study on part 2. Zechariah 14 3, Then shall the Lord go forth, and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. Zechariah 14 9, And the Lord shall be king over all the earth, in that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. So in conclusion for this study, there will be wars and rumors of wars. There are simply, they are simply part of the birth pangs. The real fearful event is not nuclear war, but rather the day of the Lord, which in all accounts seems to be longer than the day. And that's a very fascinating study in itself. The day of the Lord, some verses it seems like, wow, this sounds like, you know, the last day. And other times it sounds like, um, during the day of the Lord, uh, which is longer than the day, I believe, uh, whatever people have done, it will return on their own heads. Um, and that's, that's an aspect that obviously would have to take longer than one day to, you know, to, to go through that. But so we're going to be looking at the day of the Lord more. We're going to be looking at the uh, language, precise language of Zechariah 14. And, uh, let me find that again. <clears throat> yeah, Zechariah fourteen twelve. 
This is what we're going to be studying. And this shall be the plague wherein the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Here again, you have Jerusalem mentioned. Now, the believers in Christ are also Jerusalem. The Israel of God are the ones who are circumcised by the heart. So when you have comparison verses from Old Testament to New Testament and the definitions found uh, in, in the New Testament, you have to wonder what this, this war really is about, who have come against Jerusalem. Is it talking about the Middle East or is it talking about the believers in Christ where there is this war going on? Um, anyway, the, the plague would be, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Now people read that and say, wow, that sure sounds like nuclear war. But when you break that language down, um, it, it's, I'll talk about it next time. I, I'm not going to get into it right now. But we'll, we'll look at that and uh, see what that is really referring to. But we have to remember it's in the context of the day of the Lord. And that it seems to be what we really have to be paying attention to and fearing because it's not, you know, what man will do, one nation will do to another nation. It's, it's more of what God's going to do during the day of the Lord. And believers will know. Believers will know the time of this because it, it says it'll you know it'll come like a thief in the night, but we will know the times and seasons. We will understand the times and seasons. And you know, God does that for reasons. Perhaps it's to warn people. But um that's that's a verse that we you have to look at carefully. Um is it Second Thessalonians? I think it is. But yeah, look at that verse carefully and, and read that because the believers are not going to be in darkness. Uh, concerning the day of the Lord. We'll, we'll, we will know the times and seasons. Um, okay, I'm going to post that picture now. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Subscribe, like, uh, share. Please share. It, it really helps the channel. Um, Marty Cattuso, email is 2011studies at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. God bless you. The day of the Lord, 1 Thessalonians 5, one. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief.